General Introduction This book represents nearly 30 years worth of sermons, commentaries and web articles. It embodies the sum so far of what I have learned about the philosophy and ethos underlying the Yahwist based Jewish faith of the prophet Yeshua and the faith of his first Jewish followers. Most rabbis today will openly admit that the modern Jewish religion is based on the teachings of the ancient rabbis. A few will even go so far as to claim that the Israelite religion is dead. The thing is, the Israelite faith was what was meant to be an eternal witness to the unextinguishable presence of the God of Israel. Some will counter that the Israelite religion was all about animal sacrifice, but this is a distraction. What has been lost is the understanding of the rich theological symbolism behind animal sacrifice, which thankfully takes us beyond the outdatedness of blood offerings and provides us with valuable insights into the nature of Yahweh and God's ongoing eternal purpose for us. This loss of Yahwist understanding has enabled the deception of Paulist theology to flourish unchallenged. The prophet Yeshua is often portrayed as overruling Torah. If Torah is only about commandments, mitzvot, then we might be forgiven for this impression. However, Torah is also about principles, pikudim, and what Yeshua was doing was reaffirming the principles and ethos of the original Israelite faith, which give a living flexibility to the commandments and enable them to function in a just yet fair and wise manner. Modern Talmudism emphasizes principles as equally as commandments. For some Christians, the God-man Jesus represents an end to Judaism and is the foundation of a new revelation. For Talmudis, the human prophet Yeshua represented instead a reaffirmation of the Yahwist heart of the Israelite faith and a restoration of its ideals and purpose at a time of enormous spiritual and political crisis, which was the impending destruction of Jerusalem and the Roman exile. One of the biggest problems that religion itself faces today is the mindset that the whole earth must follow the same religion in order to solve its problems, that all human beings must convert to share the same system of beliefs. However, the nature of humanity is such that this is never going to happen. What can change, though, is in a willingness of religious people of all faiths to encourage humanity to work towards the same set of values. This is the fundamental aim of spreading the kingdom of God. Religious fundamentalism and religious tolerance are for most people the unacceptable faces of modern religion. It is not the strictness of theology that modern Talmudism would object to, but its use of hatred and discord, the psychological harm it does to people's minds, and that fundamentalists lack any basic godly compassion and empathy for those who are not their own. Because of the destructive phenomenon of religious fundamentalism and the spiritual and physical violence that ensues from it, most people have come to see religion as what drives people apart. Many decent and fair-minded people abandon religion for this very reason. This is one major problem 
that modern Talmudism is greatly concerned with, and one it seeks to redress in its moderate outlook and in its intellectually responsible theology. Some religious communities have made religion all about belief, so that one's behaviour becomes irrelevant. The notion of once saved, always saved, has created a class of individuals who see nothing wrong with greed or hatred as long as they accept Christ as their Lord and Saviour. Such religious people also look forward to conflict and collapse, and the end of the world has become their ultimate goal. Such individuals corrupt good ethics in the goal of furthering their corrupt beliefs. The only outcome of their fight will be the fracturing and collapse of their society. Talmudi theology places emphasis on thought, word and action that does not harm the sacred reputation of God. In so doing, Talmudism brings personal responsibility and accountability back into the realm of spiritual life. There are also some religious people who want to return their faith to an idealised point of time in the past and effectively fossilise it there. They imagine that the world being of the same religion is the only plan that God has. However, the fossilization of faith and society ensures that God's ultimate plans are never fulfilled and that there is no spiritual growth or evolution towards the eventual perfection of humanity. This is like ensuring that a seed never grows, that a field of wheat never produces grain, or that a tree never bears fruit. The truth is, that there never was a perfect period in the past. That is yet to come. Truly good and spiritually holy people enter the world stage at times of crisis, encourage us to remember God's ideals and exhort us to labour towards a time of human betterment. A wise people of faith learn and grow from their ongoing experience of life. You stick to your values, but your society should never set itself in stone, because a petrified society is essentially a dead society. Talmudism stands for the betterment and stability of society. By passing on its values from generation to generation, so that it improves and evolves, explaining not only what needs to be done, but also why. Other religious communities firmly believe that the solution to the world's problems is for the whole of humanity to come under the political control of their religion. Such people arrogantly believe their religion is the perfect religion, the natural religion of all humanity. They believe their scriptures to be perfect and infallible, and their founding leaders to be perfect examples of human virtue who never did any wrong. The natural consequence of this is the condescending mindset that all other religions are to be looked down on, are substandard, and that other religions have to submit to it. The only outcome of this religious stance is eternal conflict with all other faiths, a destructive and corrupting struggle to dominate and control. The eradication of all other religions will not stop human conflict. On the contrary, the existence of many religions actually prevents the vainglory of any one religion. Remember. Absolute power corrupts absolutely. The truth is that no human being
can possibly fully know the one true religion of heaven, which can never be fully understood or followed perfectly by imperfect human beings. True humility before God understands this. True submission to God means acknowledging that our lives are about seeking and engaging with the will of a living God rather than with just a book, whatever that scripture might be. This means having the humility to realise that all human beings are sons and daughters of God, regardless of their religion or lack of it. It means having the humility to acknowledge that doing God's will isn't enough. One has to be willing also to be changed by the will of God. Then there are those who look at the peace and prosperity that a spiritual way of life promises <clears throat> and are utterly bored by it. They would prefer conflict because it is more stimulating and interesting. Dystopia is more fulfilling than utopia because war and fighting gives them a stronger sense of purpose. Perpetual conflict and survival of the fittest is the only natural way of being for them, which only works in the short term. Such a philosophy stifles growth and expansion of the species in the long term. To an extent, this is also a failing of religion itself, because it has singularly failed to convince humanity of the idea that the struggle to create a better world is in itself a fulfilling, affirming and worthwhile task. Religion has failed to give humanity anything realistic and pragmatic to believe in. What is different about the Israelite religion compared to any other religion is that it is about discovering and engaging with the living will of Yahweh, living a life that shows that God's will and future plans matter, working for a better healed world and uplifting humanity to the kind of beings that God intended us to be, so that the division between heaven and earth falls away. Ultimately, Yahwism is about preparing humanity for heaven on earth, the next step in the evolution of the human species. It acknowledges that nothing created by human beings will ever be perfect. Our heroes were never perfect. Our ancestors were never perfect. But what mattered is that they all tried and God bless them for that. Talmudism, the Talmudi Israelite faith, is not an inflexible or fundamentalist faith. It brings together scripture with the living wisdom of Yahweh and what has been learned from the ongoing human experience of life. It is a rational, reasoning and just faith that is not in conflict with science. This book is by no means a complete description of modern Talmudism. However, I hope that its contents will provide a new starting point and provoke a renewed debate about the community of Yeshua's ancient Jewish followers and the foundations of both the Jewish and Christian faiths.